This video is probably the most important video of your study of trigonometry because we're going to talk about the points on a circle that make up the foundation for everything you're going to see from here moving forward. We're going to bring together the concepts of right triangle trig and angles on a circle together to find points on a circle. That's really our question. How do we find points? on a circle. And we're going to start with the theory behind what we're going to see on this thing called the unit circle, or a circle with a radius equal to 1. The theory behind it is really important. The better you understand the theory behind the unit circle, the easier it is to learn the unit circle. And so for our first example, we're going to start with a right triangle. And this right triangle is going to be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And we're going to say the hypotenuse has a distance of 1. And we don't know what the other two sides are. But what's nice about a 45, 45, 90 right triangle is it guarantees those other sides are exactly the same. So we know from the Pythagorean theorem then, using this triangle, a squared plus a squared equals 1 squared. Or if we combine like terms, 2a squared equals 1. Divide by 2, a squared is 1 half. And take the square root of both sides. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 2 is the square root of 2. Now we like to rationalize our denominators. So we'll multiply by root 2 over root 2. And so we get the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And so this is going to provide one of three important triangles for us that we're going to use, is if ever we have a 45 degree angle, which if you remember is also equal to pi over 4 radians. And if the hypotenuse is 1, the other two lengths, the length to the left and right is root 2 over 2, and the length up and down is root 2 over 2. That is our first important triangle, if you can remember that. The second important triangle is part of an equilateral triangle. If I have an equilateral triangle, all the sides are the same length, and all the angles are the same. So if I take my angles, 180 divided by 3, each angle is 60 degrees. And each side is the same length as well. So let's say the sides are of length 1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a height down that divides the top angle in half to a 30 and a 30. And it also divides the length of the bottom into 1 half and 1 half, which gives you the one whole. And if I just look at one of these right triangles, how about the one on the right, what we see is the Pythagorean theorem becomes, let's call the height b, 1 half squared plus b squared equals 1 squared which gives us 1 fourth plus b squared equals 1. Subtracting the 1 fourth from both sides, b squared equals 3 fourths. And taking the square root of both sides, b is the square root of 3 over the square root of 4 is 2. So what that tells us is for two more important triangles, which are going to be almost identical, the first one is going to have a sharp 30 degree angle, which we know is pi over 6 radians, and a hypotenuse of 1. The second is going to have a tall 60 degree angle, which is, we know is pi over 3. And again, the hypotenuse is 1. These two triangles are very similar because the opposite angle from the 30 degree is the 60 degree angle, and the opposite from the 60 is the 30 degree angle. So it's really the same triangle tip different directions. What we need to remember about this triangle is the shorter distance is always 1 half, 
And the longer distance is always the square root of 3 over 2. If I think about it, you might notice that the shortest distance, if we have a short distance on a triangle, it's 1 half. If we have a medium distance, it's the square root of 2 over 2. And if we have a long distance, it's the square root of 3 over 2. So it's the square root of 1 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, and the square root of 3 over 2 as the angles get bigger. What does this have to do with circles? Well, that's where number 3 comes in. I'm going to draw really large the first quadrant. And we're going to imagine a circle that comes through this first quadrant. The circle has a radius of 1. So this point off to the right has 1, 0 as a coordinate. The point up above has the coordinates of 0, 1. We know both the angles that go with these. The point on the right is a 0 degree or 0 radian angle. We also called it 360 degrees or 2 pi would be all the way around the circle. The top one, though, that's a 90 degree angle or pi over 2. But we're going to draw a few more angles onto here. The first angle that I want to draw is a 30 degree angle. And when I draw that 30 degree angle and drop down a right triangle, I know with the 30 degree angle, the long distance on the bottom is root 3 over 2. And the short distance going up is 1 half. That means the coordinates of that point are x, root 3 over 2, comma y, 1 half. And as we already said, that's a 30 degree angle, which is also the same as pi over 6. If I come to the middle, I'm going to erase the extra lines here. If I come to the middle, what we end up with is a 45 degree angle. And we know with the 45 degree angle, the two sides are the same. And they're in the middle, the square root of 2 over 2. So if I want the coordinates of that point, the coordinates of that point are root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, because that's how far over and up we had to go. We already said that's a 45 degree angle. And you remember, that's pi over 4 radians. I'm going to erase a couple extra lines this time as well, leaving behind the spoke. If I go up and make a 60 degree angle, we know with the 60 degree angle, same as the 30 degree angle, the short side is 1 half. The long side is root 3 over 2. So the coordinates of that point are over 1 half, up root 3 over 2. And that, after I delete my extra stuff here, is a 60 degree angle, which we know is pi over 3. We now have the coordinates of all the key points in the first quadrant that go with our key angles, both in degrees and radians, that we saw back in our first video. Now, what's nice is everything's symmetrical. So this can all be flipped over the x-axis and the y-axis. And the same logic can be used to build the entire unit circle. Now, some people like to memorize the entire unit circle. But I prefer the easier way, where if I know that I'm, for instance, at 5 pi over 3, I know the shorter distance is always 1 half. The longer distance is always root 3 over 2. But because it's down, I know that particular root 3 over 2 has to be negative, And that'll give us the coordinate point, 1 half negative root 3 over 2.
One more example on here, if I could draw 5 pi over 4, 225 degrees. That one I know is right in the middle. Because it's right in the middle, I know it's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. But because the x-coordinate is backwards, the x is negative, and the y-coordinate is down, the y is negative. And that's how we end up with the coordinate point of 5 pi over 4. And that's kind of how the entire circle gets filled in. Why do we care so much about all those key points on the circle? Well, it comes from an interesting relationship that we can notice about a triangle. Let's say we don't know the angle. We'll just call the angle theta. We already recognize from the coordinate plane the distance to the right is x, and the distance up is y. Look what happens when we calculate the cosine of theta. Cosine is the adjacent x over the hypotenuse, which we are dealing with a unit circle. So the hypotenuse is always 1 here, which means the cosine of theta is just equal to the x coordinate. Similarly, if we found the sine of theta, sine is the opposite y over the hypotenuse 1 which means the sine of theta is equal to the y-coordinate. In other words, if I want the x or the y, I'm calculating the exact same thing as the cosine or the sine. Cosine is the x-coordinate. Sine is the y-coordinate. So if I'm asked to find a sine or a cosine, I just need to decide if I'm looking for the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate. So let's see if we can practice finding some of these points on the unit circle. Let's start off with finding the sine of pi over 3. Well, if I sketch a quick unit circle, pi over 3 is the same as 2 sixths. So we count 2 of a sixth. 1, 2 sixths. 2 sixths. Pi over 3 is right there. We know the short distance is 1 half. The long distance is root 3 over 2. In this case, they're both positive. So that's 1 half root 3 over 2. But sine is particularly interested in the y-coordinate. So the sine of pi over 3, we now know, is the square root of 3 over 2. Let's try another example. Let's do the cosine of 240 degrees. Well, if I draw my unit circle, 240 degrees is a little less than 270, so it's down here. And I know the short distance is 1 half. The long distance is root 3 over 2. And because it's backwards, left would be a negative 1 half. Down is a negative root 3 over 2. That's the coordinates of the point. But I want the cosine, which is particularly interested in the x-coordinate. The cosine of 240 degrees is negative 1 half. How about finding the sine of negative 3 pi over 4? 3 pi over 4 is counting quarters, but it's negative. So we're going to count backwards. One. 2, 3 pi over 4. We're talking about the angle right there. This one divides the circle right on a quarter, so they're exactly the same length, root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Again, we went backwards, so it's negative root 2 over 2, comma negative root 2 over 2. But with the sign, we're particularly interested in the y-coordinate. So the sine of negative 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. Let's do one more. Let's do the cosine of 21 pi 
over 6. Well, over 6 is when we split it up like the clock. So we can count around 1, 2, 3 at the top, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 at the bottom, 10, 11, 12 at the right. And then we're going to copy over it. 13, 14, 15 at the top, 16, 17, 18 at the left, 19, 20, 21. It's the line straight down. What's nice about straight down is we know the circle has a radius of 1. So the point we're talking about here is 0 to the left, 1 down, which is negative 1. We're looking for the cosine, which is the x coordinate. So the cosine is equal to. 0. Let's try a similar but slightly different question. Let's find the angle that has the same sign as pi over 3. Well, pi over 3 is 2 sixths, so that's 1, 2 pi over 3. We want the angle that has the same sign. Well, sine is the y coordinate. So if we make a horizontal line, we have the same height all the way across. And what you see is this angle over here to the left has the same y coordinate, the same height which means the same sign as pi over 3. That's just another sixth over. So we count 1, 2, 3, 4 sixths, which reduces to 2 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 has the same sign value as 1 pi over 3. If I wanted to know what that is, I could drop either of these triangles to make my right angles. And I know the short sides are 1 half, and the long sides are root 3 over 2. And sine is the y coordinate. So the sine of both of these is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine would have been different. The cosine would have been negative. Let's try another one, this time in degrees, very similar to that one. Let's find the angle that has the same cosine as 110 degrees. Now, you might recognize or fail to recognize 110 is not one of our common angles. 110 is a different angle that's between our common angles. But that's OK. We can still answer the question. We might not be able to figure out what the cosine is. But we do know 110 degrees is between 90 and 180. So the cosine is going to be over here somewhere. Not exactly there. It's not to scale. But we, for our purposes, we can say it's there. The cosine is the x coordinate. So we want the x coordinate to remain the same. So we'll go down to the x and keep going to get our new angle. Now we have to figure out how many degrees are in that angle. Well, we already know that we've got the 110 degree angle. How many more degrees would get to 180? Well, 70 more degrees would get to 180, which means that lower angle is also 70 degrees. So in red, it would be all three angles together. The 110, the 70, and the other 70, giving us 250 degrees. 250 degrees and 110 degrees are each going to have the same cosine. They're going to have the same x coordinate. We don't know what it is because it's not one of our common angles, but we definitely can decide that they both have the same cosine. And this example gives rise to a discussion about these things called reference angles. You notice both of those angles that we drew on the left had a 70 degree angle with the horizontal. Those reference angles
are often helpful to us as we solve these trig problems. A reference angle is an angle that has the same, always positive, angle with the horizontal. So for example, um, let's do a 210 degree angle. We're going to find the reference angle. And just for practice, because 210 is a common angle, we're going to also find the sine and cosine. So if I draw my unit circle, 210 is just a little bit more than 180. In fact, how much more the angle with the horizontal, it's 30 degrees more. So the reference angle is 30 degrees. That's what we mean by reference angle, the angle with the horizontal, always positive. And that can really help us see, OK, the short side is 1 half. The long side is root 3 over 2. So the coordinates of that, because it's backwards and down, are negative root 3 over 2 comma negative 1 half, which tells us that the sine of 210, sine is the y coordinate, is negative 1 half. And it tells us the cosine of 210 degrees is negative root 3 over 2. So reference angles is really what we're looking at when we're deciding, is it a short side, is it a long side, or are the sides equal? Square root of 1, square root of 2, square root of 3, as the sides get bigger. Now, everything we've done up to this point has all been about the unit circle, where the circle has a radius of 1. But obviously, all circles don't have a radius of 1. So let's talk really briefly about what we can do when it's not a unit circle. And basically, we're just going to have to adjust our theory, when, which all started with looking at a triangle. On our triangle, we had x, y, and we called the hypotenuse 1. Everything we've done to this point assumed the hypothesis was 1. Well, now I'm going to say the hypotenuse is r. If I do that, the cosine of theta is now x over r. And if I multiply both sides by r, I find out r cosine theta is equal to x. Similarly, the sine of theta is equal to the y over r. And multiplying both sides by r tells me that the r sine of theta is equal to y. But another relationship that we haven't used a lot yet is the Pythagorean theorem that says x squared plus y squared equals r squared for this triangle. This is nice because x is equal to r cosine theta. So if I replace x with r squared cosine squared theta plus y, replace the y with r sine theta, squaring it gives us r squared sine squared theta is equal to r squared. Well, what's interesting about this is if we factor out an r squared, gives us cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals r squared. And then divide both sides by r squared. It leaves behind cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And actually, if we rewrite this, we'll get what we're going to often call our Pythagorean identity. 
I'm going to switch the order and just write it as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 is the way we normally see it. This is probably one of the most important relationships that comes out of trig. Regardless of what sine or cosine are, sine squared plus cosine squared will always equal 1. Let's look at some examples where we can use that property. Let's say if the sine of theta equals 2 thirds and theta is in quadrant 2, find the cosine of theta. I always start all mine with drawing a little picture. Remember, our quadrants start in the top right with 1, and they go counterclockwise numbering. So our theta is somewhere in quadrant 2. So it's over there somewhere. What's important to note about that point in quadrant 2 is the x is negative and the y is positive because it's left and up. And we also know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if sine is 2 thirds, we have 2 thirds squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Simplifying, squaring 2 thirds gives us 4 ninths plus cosine squared equals 1. Subtracting 4 ninths from both sides, 1 is 9 ninths, so 9 minus 4 is 5 ninths. And taking the square root of both sides, cosine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 over root 9 is 3. Cosine is the x-coordinate. And we notice in this case, the x-coordinate is negative. So our actual answer for the cosine of theta must be the negative version, root 5 over 3. Let's try one more example. Let's say if cosine of theta is equal to 1 fifth, and theta is in quadrant 4. Find the sine of theta. Again, I'll draw my picture. Theta is in quadrant 4, and so if we count clock counterclockwise around, it's somewhere down here in the bottom right. And what's important that we note there is while the x-coordinate is positive, the y-coordinate is negative to go over and down. From there, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. So we don't know what sine is, but we do know cosine is 1 fifth squared equals 1. And then we can solve for the sine. 1 fifth squared gives us 1 over 25 equals 1. Subtracting the 1 over 25 from both sides, 25 minus 1 is 24 over 25. And taking the square root of both sides will give us a plus or minus the square root of 24 over 5. And we can probably simplify that because 24 is 4 times 6. So that's 2 root 6 over 5, plus or minus. But again, we're talking about the sine. Sine, we know, is the y-coordinate. Here, the y-coordinate has to be negative. So now we know that the sine of theta is the negative 2 root 6 over 5. 
All of this comes from knowing the unit circle, knowing your key angles and where they are, and knowing what the coordinates of those points are. Again, rather than taking the time to memorize all the points, I encourage you to keep track of, is it a short distance, a longer distance, or are both distance the same? So you can decide if it's the square root of 1 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, or the square root of 3 over 2. Practice this on the homework. This unit circle is essential that we're comfortable and familiar with it as we move on with our study of trig.